Okay, so this is going to be a little feature video of this gorgeous MGB GT. Uh, we've already had this car in earlier in the year for some upgrades. Uh, the customer feels he wants a little bit more now. Uh, he does look at track days in some other cars, and the little 3.5 engine isn't quite cutting it. So let's have a look under the bonnet and see what we've done already. Okay, so under the bonnet, we've already upgraded to the Edelbrock 4 barrel carburetor and the RPI ignition kit. So it's running the RPI ignition amplifier, the Bosch 12 volt coil. We've also removed the uh, ballast resistor in the wiring so that we're getting full charging voltage through to the coil. So this engine's now going to be removed and uh, Holly is building us up a 4.6 engine with stage 3 cylinder heads, uh, complemented with the Piper 285 camshaft. We're also removing the gearbox in this car. We'll be replacing the original 4-speed with overdrive gearbox with a Mazda 5-speed gearbox, um, which is a gearbox that's available for um, two-wheel drive cars, Morgans, MGs, brilliant upgraded gearbox, and uh, really looking forward to driving it to see how it feels. Okay, so Steve's been very busy, which is uh, good. We've got the engine stripped down, disconnected, so uh, you want me to wiggle and you're going to pull, aren't you? That's the one. Is that how it goes? Yeah. Wiggle, wiggle. So we're now coming off the input shaft on the gearbox. Just a little bit more persuasion, which Steve offers. Yep, all good in it. Through the push. Yep. Okay. One MG engine, now coming out. Well, that was almost too easy. Okay, well, with the engine now out, um, it's time to remove the gearbox, ready for the Mazda box to go into position. And uh, we could have removed the engine and gearbox together as one. Um, we think, you know, tilt it down at an angle, pull it up. Uh, due to some of the videos we do here and that, we've um, actually separated them and taken them out separately. Uh, those that watch our workshop update videos that are released weekly will understand why we did that. Right, well the MGB engine build is underway. So 4.6 bottom end built up. The Piper 285 camshaft is now installed and Holly's now dialing that in. So the crankshaft has now been uh, dialed in to zero degrees on number one is that TDC. There's a degree either way on uh, on that, so he's found the centre and now marked zero. So now he can start dialing the camshaft in. Okay, so Holly's now dialed the 285 camshaft in and uh, we're gonna actually demonstrate uh, where full lift is and actually show this um, overlap where you're at full lift for several degrees. So if we rotate the crankshaft round now, we should get to about 104, 105 degrees on there and full lift is achieved there at 105 and we can actually roll it round you keep going round hole we're now at about 110 or 109 to 110 and we're now actually just coming off full lift so if you just go a little bit more round we can see it, it jumps off of full lift so Holly's dialed the cam in to achieve full lift um, number one inlet Yep. and uh, at 107 degrees so uh, next step on this engine is cylinder heads on and rocker gear right well Steve's got the gearbox and prop shaft and all the bits associated out of the car now so uh, here's the kit that we've got to install the uh, helix clutch cover and friction disc we've got the gear stick and knob, essential for moving faster than just first gear. And here's the uh, bit that we're all excited about, the Mazda 5-speed box. Uh, it comes complete with concentric slave cylinder in the hydraulic lines. The whole kit here is designed for the MGB GT. We are able to supply the gearboxes for other um, you know, applications as well. If you're building a kit car, then obviously we can supply just this bit without the prop shafts. You can have one made. We are going to do a feature video on gearboxes. We've got T5 as well here at the moment. Uh, so we're going to look at the two in comparison. Um, so we won't concentrate too much on this now, this is a feature video on the MG. At the back end, the rest of the kit, we've got a 90 degree adapter for the speedo cable so that it doesn't uh, gnarl up and kink the actual cable when it comes out of the gearbox. Half moon plate, a prop shaft with the slip joint on the end. 
and then the mounting brackets. So uh, thus far it looks like a complete kit. Let's see how the installation goes. Okay, so Holly has finished building the engine up. Obviously there's quite a few ancillaries and bits missing off the front to make it a lot easier to uh, fit into the MG. Um, so stage three heads are on. Uh, we show you the cam being dialed in just a second ago, although it was a few days ago in, in real life. The rocket covers are all painted up lovely. The recalbret has been refitted and jetted up for the 4.6 now, rather than the original 3.5 that uh, it was sat on. The RPI ignition kit remains the same. It's now coupled to the Mazda gearbox. So the clutch has all been installed onto the original flywheel. This gearbox is actually supplied with uh, two different slave cylinders to account for two different thicknesses of flywheels. So we've done the measurements there and made sure we've got the right slave cylinder. So now it's a case of um, lift it up, over it goes. We've got it on the uh, hoist so we can angle it correctly. Slide the hull assembly in. Probably about 10 minutes work, I reckon. Job's a good one. Right, well, quite literally 10 minutes later and it's in. Um, so now Steve's going to go exhaust manifolds on, got the water pump, bottom pulley, uh, alternator setup. Obviously all the ancillaries for the engine really, now it now needs to be fully dressed with everything. And uh, the gearbox kit can go on, we'll show you some of that from underneath as well. It all being installed and then it'll be ready for road test. Okay, so uh, everything's in, it's on, it's up and running. So yeah, the original RPI ignition kit that we fitted uh, a little while back is back in place. No need to upgrade that for the 4.6, it's what we use throughout our entire range of engines that have distributors on. Um, exhaust is all fitted up. Uh, the original radiator has gone back in. Uh, we did have an alley radiator that the customer sent to us for installation, however it had some uh, fitting issues. Um, so he's now actually decided to buy a frontline one uh, with an electric fan kit which uh, should just bolt straight in. Uh, so I think really what we're all wanting to see is underneath with the Mazda gearbox. So uh, let's go up in the air and take a look at that. Okay, so uh, underneath, um, that's what the bottom of a 4.6 looks like. Much the same as the bottom of a 3.5, because all you can see is the sump, which fits. So, um, yeah, gearbox then. Really nice insulation. Bags of room around the gearbox, which is really, really nice and makes installing it a lot easier. The kit that uh, comes with the box has all fitted up really nicely. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the little adapter here to come out of the speedo outlet um, just helps that cable to not, not kink in that area there. Uh, cross member clamp bracket arrangement here does exactly what it's meant to do. We didn't have to fettle or change anything and the prop shaft bolted straight in as well. So uh, actually a very comprehensive kit, um, definitely uh, worth the money. So the big question really is, what does a 4.6 Mazda gearbox Stem GB GT drive like? Let's find out. Okay, so we're out for road testing the MG. Bags of torque down the bottom end of the rev range as you'd expect from a 4.6 engine. It doesn't really matter what gear you're in, the car pulls like a steam train. And uh, with the stage three cylinder heads and 285 camshaft, we've obviously got the horsepower at the top end as well that uh, this customer and uh, the car really deserves. Mazda 5 speed gearbox is driving really, really nicely. It's, it's smooth, uh, really nice to select all the gears. Very, very impressed with that conversion kit. Everything fitted up. We've just got the speedo removed at the moment, so that's being sent off to uh, the actual speedo repaired but also calibrated. So we've got a, a digital speedo in at the moment on our phone. So um, I think we'll head down this road here, Steve, and abandon you for oh. the normal. It's cold. Well, you should have bought a jacket, shouldn't you? It's not like you do this every time. Okay. I reckon about here, mate. Yeah. Okay then. I might pick you up in a little while, alright? Alright. It's a long walk back.
like two count out there, was it? Nah, it was all right. Wait Did get we... funny looks though. <laughs> Wait until we start doing these in the winter. Yes. It'll get cold. I remember it well. So, um, yeah, this car just lends itself to lazy driving if you're just uh, enjoying the countryside and the fake farmers in the field. Um, so, thank you, Mr. Car, for not pulling out. Yeah, we can just pretty much run around in fifth gear, using fourth occasionally. It's absolutely no stress on the engine or the car. But then you, when you do want things to liven up a bit, um, dropping down into second gear can be a bit sketchy with the torque we've got on a damp road, as today. Third gear is a little bit more settled, <laughs> but still pulls very, very strong. Sounds nice from the outside, too. I haven't heard it from the outside, so I'm looking forward to hearing that. Obviously, we're not going to do a strong pull because we've put a few miles on the engine. But as you can see, when you pull it through the gears, it's still fairly rapid for a classic car. Pretty rapid for any car. Well, yeah. And that was without using the uh, extent of the rev range yet. So um, once the engine's got a few more miles on it, uh, this will definitely be one, uh, one very quick MGB GT. You know the only problem I've got with this. You have to give it back. I know. <laughs> it's the worst part of the job. Yeah. I think um, we'll do the normal thing for our trip back and uh, just leave this in fifth. All right. There we go. Fifth. fifth. Yeah. Don't really need any other gears. I've dipped the clutch, but <laughs> I'm in fifth. The clutch is out. I think that's 15 I saw on the speedo just then. Was it? Oh, thank you, Mr. Mrs. Vauxhall, for pulling Always out in front of me. never give way to the right. That's yeah. what the highway code says. Exactly. Still in fifth, though. Still in fifth. Originally upgraded it to the Edelbrock 500 carb. Blah, blah, blah. 